Good morning guys and welcome back. So today we're talking about how to keep your Jeep reliable. Now I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to, to make this video because I need to check over everything for next weekend. Next weekend we're towing a camper, a little teardrop camper up to Hangaroa which is like a little campsite about an hour and a half from here. So I thought it would be a great opportunity to go over everything, make sure nothing needs to be fixed, make sure all the fluids are good, everything's up to date and everything like that. So I thought I'd make a small video for you how to keep your Jeep reliable. Now there's a few things I do pretty much once a week to make sure um, I've got correct oil levels, everything's nice and tight, I don't have to replace anything and stuff like that. Especially coming up to a trip like that. Now this is the first time I'll be towing anything. It only weighs like 550 kilos, so it's quite light. So the, the Jeep won't do it any problems, but the last thing you need is a steering component to go wrong. You run low in oil, um, gearbox oils down, diff fluids down and stuff like that. And just small stuff like that can cause problems. Uh, so today we'll be checking over a few things and a few things I do pretty much weekly uh, to keep the Jeep reliable. Now if you guys are planning a trip I would really recommend doing something like this maybe two weeks a week beforehand that way if you do run into any issues or something that does need to replace it's not the day before the night before and stuff like that so if you do need to get parts it's not a big issue. But as I said there's things I do once a week to keep the Jeep up to date make sure it's well oiled, well surfaced and stuff like that. Now I know a lot of people, a lot of people out there pay for their services to get done like at dealerships and stuff like that to cover a warranty. That's all fine and good, but when you're out on the trails, what are you going to do if something goes wrong? Um, you can still get it serviced by a professional, there's no harm in doing that. Um, it can be more reliable sometimes because you're not having to do it yourself, it's saving time and stuff like that. But it can be more expensive. But if you're out on the trail, how would you know if something's gone wrong? So this is kind of for the people that um, get your Jeep service at a dealership or a service centre. Just a few things to check over before you do go out or go towing or whatever it might be um, but let me know if you guys get your server your Jeep service at a dealership um, a service center or do your services themselves because a lot of people are different as a lot of people find it more reliable and easier to go straight to a dealership a lot of people just do it themselves because uh, that's what they like to do I like to do myself I, I feel more comfortable doing that I've had some horrible experiences with some dealerships bad stuff anyway um, so we'll start in the engine bay now um, I know a lot of people come from different walks of life and do different jobs and stuff like that. So my job, I am a forklift driver and a crane operator. Now with those sort of jobs, you've got to do daily checks, uh, especially with forklifts, you're carrying heavy weights, like we carry up to 12 tonnes worth of weight. So we do daily checks of um, hydraulics and stuff like that to make sure everything's all good. I'm not saying do daily checks on your Jeep, but at least weekly checks, um, at least weekly checks will um, keep your Jeep in good condition. Now I don't know if you guys knew this, but um, in World War II, Willys also had a little checklist that all the privates um, and all the uh, guys in the army would actually go over the Willys Jeeps um, on a daily basis. They had service every thousand miles, what's that, five, six hundred kilometers or something like that. Uh, so they'd be checking the cooling system, transmission and transfer case, rear differentials, gas tank, uh, front differentials, crankshaft, uh, crankcase, crankshafts and stuff like that. Just make sure the Jeep's in great condition because if you don't have to be fighting a war, go out and something breaks. So they used to do almost daily checks on their Woolies Jeeps to make sure everything's reliable. Now I do weekly checks. Now those weekly checks are just going underneath the Jeep like we'll do in a second. Um, twisting those front end components, uh, tie rods and stuff like that, make sure they're nice and tight. Checking wheel bearings and stuff like that. But um, things that you guys can do every day that doesn't necessarily need to get underneath the Jeep is just checking oil. Um, air, filter, air filters can be a big one if it's nice and dirty it will uh, degrade your fuel economy and stuff like that a uh, big one especially for jeeps you don't want overheating uh, so coolant uh, level check make sure you got the right coolant in there and all that sort of stuff that's a big important one uh, brake fluid um, steering I forgot what the bloody thing's called now Steering, uh, power steering fluid and stuff like that can just help, especially when you're out on the trails. Um, so I'll chuck you guys on a tripod. Um, so the first thing, well, I won't chuck you guys on the tripod actually. So the first thing you're doing, locate your um, engine oil uh, dimp stick um, and just check that. It does have a line on there. I don't know if you guys can see that. The things you're looking for is color. Put it on there. The color. Mine's a little bit dark, it's not quite due for its next service, but check for the most important thing is oil level. You don't be running it too low, starving your engine of oil. You don't want it too black, you want it nice, clear, um, 
uh, fluid in there, uh, but oil level is one of the big ones. If I can get that back in with one hand, yes. Oil level is one of those big ones. Uh, now with me, I normally keep a small uh, quart of oil um, in the um, dirty gear bag in the back, just in case I'm out and about, out on the trails, especially if I'm going away like next weekend. I'll keep it in there, um, and before I actually head out on whatever I'm doing, um, and before I'm coming back, I'll actually check my oil um, and stuff like that. And if it is low, I'll just give it a little top up. Uh, those are really handy to have on hand. Now I'll also keep um, like a small gallon of water, um, just in case the radiator this is going low. I won't keep any antifreeze on me because it's bloody hot here, guys. You can see meridian singlets, freaking hot. Uh, but just uh, distilled water is fine. I normally keep that in the back, a um, couple of liters and stuff like that. Just in case it is running low, I've got something to get me home. I've got something to make sure the Jeep's not going to overheat. So with the cooling, um, if you guys don't know, um, you've got radiator cap. So Some Jeeps are different. The Cherokees might be different. Um, I know some don't actually have a radiator cap. They've got like an overflow reservoir. Uh, but on the Wranglers and stuff like that, especially the older vehicles, all you'll have is a radiator cap. You've also got a overflow bottle there. As you can see, the overflow bottle um, is at a good level. Uh, it does have like a measurement level on it. Um, as you can see, it's a good color as well. If it is looking rusty and stuff, that will indicate that you probably need to do a radiator flush and an engine flush as well. You might have a little bit of discoloration there. So I recommend doing that if it is discolored, like a little rusty uh, color. Um, it's also a good opportunity to check the color of your antifreeze, to check if you've got any oil mixing with your water. If you do, yeah, it's not good. It's not good at all. But let's have a look. Hopefully it's all good. Um, the overflow reservoir does look good, so we should be fine. Now, for some reason, the one on the JK it can be a bit... You've got, you got to find the sweet spot. Okay. There you go. So just it's a two-hand job. And as you can see there, you can see the fluid dripping out. It's a nice colour, it's like a pink colour. Um, it's an, at a nice level, it's not low. Um, if it is looking a bit low, uh, just top it up. Um, get the right antifreeze uh, for your car. There's different colours, green, pink, I think there's like a blue as well. Check for your log books, uh, see what the manufacturer recommends and just go with that. Don't differ from that, um, manufacturers done that for a reason. So that's all looking good. So we've checked engine oil. Um, these are the kind of the important things. Also go over and check the air filter. Now I do need a air filter replacement at some point soon. So if you guys can recommend a decent air filter. So all it is is a couple of clips. Um, obviously a lot of cars are gonna be different. They kind of just pop out. And there's your air filter there. Obviously mine's looking pretty bloody dirty. So if you're running out of time or you're running out of money, you don't necessarily have to go buy a new air filter straight away. What you can do is just kind of tap it out. Tapping it out will get all the dirt and grime. That's bloody disgusting. I probably should replace it, shouldn't I? Can you guys recommend a good air filter? But it's pretty bad. If you've got compressed air, you can blow them out. If not, um, like most people don't have compressed air, you can do is get the wheel of your car and just tap it out. It's going to get a lot of the grime and stuff out of there. It's not going to be perfect, um, but it's going to be a lot better than what it was. Uh, air filters are really important. Um, it's getting clean air into your engine bay. Dirty air filter is going to um, put your fuel economy up. Um, it's not going to breathe as well. It's going to not going to run as smoothly. That's the dirty side, so that's facing down. And then all it does is clips back into place. And there, there, there. And oh shit! Right there. There, all right. So, moving on, we've got um, your brake booster with your brake fluid. You don't necessarily have to open it up. You can see from the side there that it's a good level. You can open it up to make sure it's a good color and stuff like that. If you want, 
You can see it there. Normally it's got like a little float and stuff in it. And uh, power steering fluid, that's it. Open that up. And we're looking pretty good. Nice dirty power steering fluid is always so disgusting. Anyway, so that's pretty much it in the engine bay. You can check for oil leaks around the rocker cover gasket and stuff like that. Um, always good to check for small oil leaks and stuff like that. That can cause over time, especially in the 4Os. In the TJs and Cherokees, they normally have a rocker cover casket. It's just normal. Uh, but have a look for that. Have a look for any discoloration, oil leaks, uh, water leaks, anything like that. Uh, check the tension of your belt. Check the wear um, of your belt as well. If you can see it wearing, might be time for a new belt. The last thing you want to do is be out on the trails. Have a belt snap. If it is looking warm but it's not at the end of its life, maybe buy a new one and just keep it in the Jeep. Especially if you're out on the trails. If you're just going back and forth to work, it's probably not too big a deal. If it does snap, you can just replace it whenever. Uh, but if you're on the trails and you're miles away from anything, a tow truck or a friend, it's probably a good idea to keep that in the car if you can see that belt wearing along. The last thing you want to do is pay for a tow truck when you're out in the middle of nowhere and um, have no way back. Or you can just like take your belt off and use that if you want. I've heard stories of that. But check that. Uh, make sure the tension's are right. Make sure there's no excessive wear. Uh, check for, we've talked about leaks. Make sure your oil filter um, is nice and tight. Uh, make sure there's no leaks and, oh, blah. That's no, disgusting. Make sure there's no leaks, make sure that's nice and tight, make sure that seal around that is nice and tight as well. If you are looking at doing some water crossing stuff like that, make sure all those components um, are nice and tight on there. You don't want any water getting in there. Uh, so talking about water crossings, let's jump underneath the Jeep um, and have a look at our diffs. We'll give those, uh, the differential fluid, a quick check um, and then we'll move on to different components um, of the Jeep as well. Anything like that. Uh, check the tension of your belt, check the wear um, of your belt as well, if you can see it wearing, might be time for a new belt. The last thing you want to do is be out on the trails, have a belt snap. If it is looking warm but it's not at the end of its life, maybe buy a new one and just keep it in the Jeep, especially if you're out on the trails. If you're just going back and forth to work, it's probably not too big a deal. If it does snap, you can just replace it whenever. Uh, but if you're on the trails and you're miles away from anything, a tow truck or a friend, it's probably a good idea to keep that in the car if you can see that belt wearing along. The last thing you want to do is pay for a tow truck when you're out in the middle of nowhere and um, have no way back. Or you can just like take your belt off and use that if you want. I've heard stories of that. But check that. Uh, make sure the tension's are right. Make sure there's no excessive wear. Uh, check for, we've talked about leaks. Make sure your oil filter um, is nice and tight. Uh, make sure there's no leaks. And, oh, blah. That's no, disgusting. Make sure there's no leaks, make sure that's nice and tight, make sure that seal around that is nice and tight as well. If you are looking at doing some water crossing stuff like that, make sure all those components um, are nice and tight on there. You don't want any water getting in there. Uh, so talking about water crossings, let's jump underneath the Jeep um, and have a look at our diffs. We'll give those, uh, the differential fluid, a quick check um, and then we'll move on to different components um, of the Jeep as well. Alright, so at the back of the car again, I uh, just want to check and there's no extra play in the sway bars, control arms and stuff like that, checking for rust. I've got a little bit of surface rust happening up there, so I've got to monitor that, uh, paint it when need be. I've got over my diff, uh, painted that, uh, make sure it's all good, make sure things are as they seem pretty much. Uh, just checking, hand checking if something seems a bit loose. Going over it with a spanner, uh, chicken control arms, stuff like that, making sure it's all nice and tight. A little bit more room back here, a little bit easier to see. The front was bad. So again, a little bit of a tail there to check, uh, see if your oil dripping down. Same again. It's really handy that these, the, the size of the nut thread is all it is, is... Alright. I don't know who the hell did that up last time. But that was bloody tight. So... <sighs> it's hot today, guys. It's hot. Alright. Alright, these are also magnetised as well, so if you can see any 
um, metal shavings on the end of that, that means something's not right. So as you can see no oil dripped out this time. And you can see it there. So nice and clear. Good there's no metal shavings on the back of that, which is a good sign. Do that back up. Also good to check when you're under here your shocks um, as well, make sure there's no leakages and stuff like that. Alright, so that's all good. As I said, uh, just check, make sure your shocks aren't leaking. Shocks, make sure there's no fluid or anything coming from in there. Uh, make sure they're compressing properly. We talked about sway bars, just check bushings. Um, just stuff like that, it's just general stuff. Uh, just cheap maintenance like this, just going over things um, will just save you in the long run. Uh, from big expensive bills uh, like small stuff like just checking diff uh, differential fluid make sure there's no um, middle shavings um, on the drain plug and stuff like that it's just a massive bonus um, and if you do want to drain it out they, there is a drain plug there on the bottom of the diff uh, really simple guys I might do a video later on of that on how to change the fluid but really simple um, it's just quick things to check um, before you do go away um, and it will just save you in the long run. Um, rear drive shaft, uh, rear, uh, yeah, drive shaft, blah blah, whatever that thing's called. Can't bloody, it's hot today, guys, super hot. Uh, make sure there's no play in that. Just checking if there's any play, things are worn out, bushings, any oil leaks, and stuff like that. And just check maintenance like, maintenance like this, as we said, can save you in the long run, can save you when you're out and about. Um, also, checking brackets like that making sure, sure they're not cracked, um, especially whether it's a control arm, stuff like that, if, especially if you're doing really hardcore uh, corrugated roads and stuff like that. These can think, these little cracks here, here, and obviously on there can wear up so much faster if you're um, bashing them off-road all the time. So make sure you just guys are just checking those, making sure your diffs aren't leaking and stuff like that. Um, and it's just small maintenance like this, like two weeks prior, a week prior, if there is any issues, you can easily go get them either welded up, cheap, change your oil and stuff like that. If you do it like the night, night before, a couple of days before, you can't really do anything about it. Um, and if you can, it's just going to be a lot harder. All right, so that's pretty much it for today, guys. It's really simple stuff. I know a lot of people pay to get their car service from dealerships and mechanics, and that's fine. But it's just peace of mind, especially... But you might get it serviced from a mechanic or something before you do go out, but when you're out on the track, before you head back or you're going on a hard trail that you might be out of service, you might be by yourself, something like that, it's a good idea to just go around the car, check a few things, uh, make sure there's no leaks if you're doing any water crossings, especially in your gearbox, differential and stuff. If you get water mixed with oil, it's not um, a good outcome, so it's good to just check over those things. And if there is a few leaks, just be a bit more cautious, uh, maybe not drive it so hard, maybe just um, take a different line and stuff like that, just so you're not putting your Jeep under as much stress. And if you are checking these things a couple weeks, a couple days before, I would recommend either two weeks or a week before, that way if there's any issues arising when you are checking, you can easily fix those things and you can enjoy yourself a bit more when you're off-road because you're not worrying about small little things. I know, as I said, a lot of people do service their cars and they don't really know what to look for or how everything kind of works, um, and I don't, I'm still learning, but just small things like checking oil, um, checking for leaks, uh, just hand checking, steering components, make sure they're all nice and tight. Um, the last thing you want is to do a long road trip, uh, you're getting down the motorway, um, and, you, and you start getting a death problem and stuff like that. It's not fun, it's not a good experience. Um, so, um, there, I am making this video, um, because someone did ask if I could do a video on just like simple maintenance for your Jeep and how to keep your Jeep reliable. So I, th I think it was maybe Georgia, oh, sorry I forgot your name, but um, it was a while ago you did comment asking if I could do a video uh, similar, to, similar asking if I could do a video like this. So 
thank you guys for commenting um, and suggesting videos. Have you guys got any ideas for future videos, whether it's for driving related here in Australia, wherever Jeep related products, reviews, camping gear reviews. As I said, we are going away next week to Hangaroa, so we'll be doing a video of that if you guys want to check that out. Oh, as I said, we are hiring a teardrop trailer, like a reverse one. It's also its opposite, pivots at the front. Um, so I will be doing a video, a walk around of that, uh, price of that, what everything costs, um, and everything that's kind of included in that as well, and when you can rent those from as well. So if you guys want to check those out, um, hang, hang around for that and check those out next week. Please smash the subscribe button so you guys stay up to date with all those videos as well. But really cheap maintenance. Uh, it's really simple, guys. Just get in the car, have a look. Uh, move things around, check your oils. It's just doing things by eye and doing things by spanner and just checking stuff. It just makes a big, big difference when you're out on the trails. But that's pretty much it for today, guys. If you like this video, smash that subscribe button if you haven't already. Stay up to date with those videos, especially for the ones next week when we're going away. Um, if you haven't already, smash that like button. It would help us out in a massive way. I love for the channel to grow. Tell YouTube you guys like my content and stuff like that, so we can continue making videos and maybe do a few different things in the future as well. But thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Sure.